Howdy guys and gals, Mikey V here with another installment in the search for silver. This week we are going to be going through a box of nickels. Now, I've already cracked this open just to see how they were rolled. I haven't looked at any of them yet, but they're all shrink wrapped. So who knows what we're going to get, but at least we can get a rough idea. The I was going to say that one looked like it has a bit of toning, but it's only on, on some parts of it, so who knows what that could be. I'm going to look for enders, and I'll get back to you. If I find any, I'll include that in the video. Alright, so looking at all the enders, didn't see anything that struck me right out as silver, but I do have some interesting ones. Um, we've got not one not two, but three modern buffalo enders. I don't know, those are slightly low mintage, so that's kind of cool. And then we have a really odd one. Here's what it's supposed to look like. Here's what it does look like. <laughs> I thought maybe at first that I had my first carved nickel, but uh, it looks like it's just really badly worn and aged, but I'll save these five rolls for last so I can do a comparison on those two. Anyway, I'm going to get right into it, and if I find anything, I'll get back to you. Alright, so we are on the board with our first silver of the hunt, which is actually, this is only my second silver war nickel that I've ever found, coin roll hunting. It is in 1943, Philadelphia. Um, unfortunately, it is too dirty at the moment to be able to tell if it is a 43 over 42. So I'm going to have to go to the coin shop and see if I can figure out a way to properly clean it without damaging it, unless you guys have some suggestions. Um, I'll probably do a video where I clean it. Um, once I figure out how to do it without damaging it. That way we can find out whether or not it is indeed an error or not. But hey, silver. Alright, we're on the board again with another silver war nickel. Again, this one is also a 1943 Philadelphia. As you can see when I flip it here. Unfortunately, again, as the other one, the 43 is too dirty to be able to tell whether or not it is a 3 over 2. So I'm going to have to find out a way to get those cleaned up so I can take a look on camera and see whether or not they are. Alright, so we have our first Canadian nickel. Um, fortunately, this one happens to be of the variety that still contains a certain composition of nickel, which is actually technically a precious metal. Um, I believe 1982 was the year they stopped making Canadian nickels out of nickel. So if you come across these coin hunting, I would save anything that's before 1982, if you're interested. Alright, Silver War Nickel number three. Again, like the other two, this one is also a 1943 Philadelphia Mint. Again, too dirty to tell whether it's the 43 over 2. Oh, so I'll just uh, get back to you if I find anything else, and I'll definitely have to do a video on these in the future. Okay, so now on to the rolls I said I'd open live. I'm going to start with the Buffalo Enders first. I'll probably wind up doing a time lapse of this it'll just be too long otherwise
Whoa. That's kind of messed up. Set that one to the side. side. That's one of the ones I wrote down. I'll show that one in the wrap up. Yeah, there's no silver in that one. Uh, so far, no silver. The one I set aside just then was a 1982 Philadelphia, which for some reason is actually worth more than face value. It doesn't really say why in the red book though. So it could be any number of reasons. 90, 32, 15, Oh, there's an old one. A 1959. It's in pretty decent shape, too. I don't know how well you can see that. I'm going to set that aside. 35D. Looks to just be a normal variety. One thing with the 1975Ds is uh, there is an error with it that isn't laid out directly in the Red Book. It's in a paragraph on its own uh, next to the photos. Um, 75D has an error where the mint mark, instead of being in its normal spot uh, below the date, it'll be kind of to the side of the date, almost like right next to uh, Jefferson's ponytail. It's a 1962, but it's some pretty junk. It was in 1955, let's see, 1955 Denver, no pole steps, but it's, it's not terrible. That could be uh, potentially a, a D over S, I believe. Yeah, 1955, there's an error where they have the, uh, the Denver mint mark over the San Francisco mint mark, if I'm not mistaken. So far, this roll is looking pretty uneventful, other than the uh, 59 and a 55. 73 Denver. There's another buffalo in there. It's not a, it's a modern buffalo. 82 Denver. 94. 93. If I always want to, and every coin hunt you do, um, flip the coin kind of like this to check for uh, die rotation. Um, if you get something where it's not complete straight up and down, you'll see how it's aligned perfectly when you flip it. If it's not aligned like that, it's actually going to be worth a small premium. So you'll want to save anything you find like that. I haven't ever found any, but I have seen some of the channels I watch pull. Just to say that's probably one of my bucket listers I want to find at some point. Along with a blank planchet, I'd love to find one of those. Uh, 
some people will say a blank planchet's kind of boring, but I think it's kind of neat. 76. One modern buffalo. It really jumped up ninety five. It's a pretty nice looking nineteen seventy two. I'm going to look through these in more detail as well, just to see if I missed anything after I've opened them all. I doubt I did, though. But you never know. Wouldn't be a nickel hunt without a whole junk load of 1964s. I think there was like one billion of those minted, if I'm remembering the numbers right. Probably the most heavily minted nickel year ever. So 62, I'll set that to the side since it's pretty old. Like always, I've got my trusty list off to the side here. It helps to have something in front of you so you don't have to constantly be flipping through the pages of uh, uh, the Red Book. This is 75. I'll have to check and see if that uh, mint mark's in the right spot. pretty badly scraped up. Not going to keep it though. Alright, on to the fun ones. So this is the regular uh, how the nickel is supposed to look on the obverse. So I'm going to keep that to the side there and I'll show you uh, the jumped up one when I get to it. As far as live openings go, this has been pretty, pretty uneventful. But coin roll hunting is like a treasure hunt. You never know what you're going to find. Interesting. It was a 1968. It's in pretty bad shape, though. Really nice looking 1990. You want to check your older nickels as well. Um, the uh, 1940s through the 1970s, I believe. Um, look at the reverse at the Monticello design. And if it has full steps, that's going to be six steps separated clearly with five lines. Um, those are going to fetch a nice little premium as well because there's not many that are that nice looking. Modern nickels, you'll notice pretty much almost every single one of them 
has uh, the clearly, clearly, clearly separated steps. But most of the older nickels you'll come across, the steps on Monticello are just going to kind of look like a blob. Seventy-three. Really, really pitted and junked up. Nineteen eighty. Oh, on to the fun one. Let's see. Ah, as I fail. Oh yeah, that is a really, really heavily worn 2005, and the back looks to be of the Ozark design, but it's also really, really heavily worn. We were going through, we thought we found some when we were going through the coins that might have been silver errors. But um, <laughs> we broke out the scale, only to find out, <laughs> apparently, the scale is no good on nickels because they're all going to weigh the same, five grams. They're all going to weigh five grams. Kind of a interesting. Most other coins, you can tell whether it's silver by weighing it because the silver one will actually weigh more, but not so with the nickels, apparently. Somehow they managed to get the uh, design of the silver war nickels just right that they'll uh, weigh exactly the same as a regular nickel. So, interesting little fact that I actually didn't know until today. say 1964s or a diamond dozen but every now and then you'll come across some really nice examples still doesn't mean I'm gonna save it but it looks pretty nice oh, dang I was really hoping that would be full steps take a look at that 1968 thing is in incredible condition but if you look at the back the steps are a blob Unfortunate. With the condition of that thing, I was really hoping it'd be full steps. Back into the pile it goes. I don't have any books to put the coins in, so I don't really save it. Whoa! Don't really save anything. That's something. It's not silver, but 1940. It's always nice when you come across something that old. And, oh my goodness, um, I believe I just found a full steps on live, on a live roll open. Um, I don't know how well you can see that, but I'll include a picture in the uh, follow-up. But that is a full steps, 1940s. That's awesome. I can't believe I found that live. That's, that's ridiculous. Those are completely uninterrupted. Now you'll see some that are almost full steps where there's like a gouge in it, but you can still see the clear lines. But I didn't, I didn't see any Mars in the steps on that at all. That's going to be worth quite a bit, I think, if it is indeed a full step variety. Again, I'll have to take a closer look at that once I've finished looking at the rest of these and I'll include it in the wrap up. Well that's awesome. At the very least I found something pretty good on live so I'll get back to you. Alright wrap up time. So we've got 
So it'll focus. A 1938 over there. And a 1939. Two oldest nickels. Got two 1968 S's. One 1969 S. Four, no, five 1970 S's. One Canadian pre-82 nickel, nickel. Some oddities here. I don't know if I'll wind up keeping all these or not. I don't know how well you can see. It's not really focusing. You see there, Monticello's kind of pushed upwards. I don't know, I'm pretty sure that's post-mint damage. Um, next to it, we've got a blue nickel. And I'm not sure what's going on with that one right there. Looks like you have like a glue or something, but that is really glossy and smooth to the touch. And then there's uh, 1946 as well. It's been another one of the oddities. Um, actually, that probably should have gone with the war nickels. Uh, let's put that up there. And we've got... These were all out of one roll. These all kind of have some form of copper toning to them, but, and, you'll see here, it's the 1940, that I found another one, off camera, that is also going to be uh, full steps, and then, to illustrate the difference between the 1940 full steps and not full steps I have somewhere here yeah so here is a 1940 that is not full steps you can see the steps are just kind of blobs but over here if you look closely focus you can kind of see the lines it doesn't want to focus I'll include images but there's two 1940 full steps that I found here's the one that I found live the ah, focus already My camera does not like me today. But yeah, that's the 1940 full steps that I found on live. And then here are the three silver 1943 war nickels that I found. And then the ones over here that I'm not certain of. Um, since all the nickels weigh the same, there's a 1942 without a mark on the back. And then two 1946s. It's possible that... The 46 or the 42 could have been struck on the wrong planchet, so I'm just going to keep those. I'm going to have the metal content tested to find out whether they are or not. Anyway, that's it for now. Alright folks, this has been Mikey V. Uh, again, if you like this video, drop me a like, subscribe, and uh, if you want to, you can check out my other videos if you haven't already. I'll catch you guys on the next one.